Dan Skyver, you got a new short idea. I've been waiting for one. We do. Um, <clears throat> we're adding ball back uh, to the short side. Uh, for those who don't know, ball is the does not make the ball jar anymore. Just to be clear, they sold that. It's the most common <laughs> investor question. Uh, but the, they balls. do make aluminum cans. Yeah, I, I haven't thought of all the ball jokes. That's something I, I usually just make we titled the note was uh, aluminum cans, which I think is very clever. I thought of that one myself, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, but it's a uh, yeah, they make aluminum cans, which is an ultra mature industry. I mean, it, it, you know, it's you know, there are pictures of aluminum cans from you know 1910 or or 1920s. You know. It's very, very old, and it's very mature, and it hasn't grown in a very long time. Um, and it has picked up a growthy ESG narrative in, say, the last three or four years, and an investor following an evaluation that matched that ESG story that aluminum cans are good for the environment. Of course, as it turns <laughs> out, only about half of aluminum cans in the U.S. are captured for recycling which the company keeps saying over and over again, infinitely recyclable or twice. You know, that's what 50% recycling means is you use it once, it gets recycled, and then it ends up in a landfill for hundreds of years. So, and they're also plastic coated. So this idea that they're not plastic is not, not entirely accurate either. There's less plastic, but it's a combination of both plastic and aluminum. Uh, so it's not good for the environment. I think it's a little, it's a little silly. Uh, but uh, it is a notable quad one laggard. So it is seen, and I think is a less cyclical name than, you know, iron ore or whatever. And uh, it has a bit more of a, you know, the character of a staples like packaging company. Uh, that's one reason we took it off in July, uh, which was good timing in retrospect. Uh, but as we get more cyclical heading into this year with additions like CAT, I think it's a good ballast name on the short side, right? You have something there. Uh, you know, Rollins, uh, Ball, those are the kinds of things that don't do well. No one's like, oh, you know, the, we're in quad one, let's buy some, you know, aluminum cans they want to buy. I think things that will be more like trucks and uh, machinery names, things that are more cyclical. Uh, Revy, uh, yeah, or, or things that are, you know, at least going to make you money, right? Not things that are just going to save you in a, in a crisis. Uh, the thing that I think is really interesting this go around versus last go around is we have a lot of clarity on the capacity side. So this doesn't sit in staples, it sits in materials. And the reason why it sits in materials is because, you know, it is a, uh, uh, you know, a highly uh, capacity sensitive name. So we're seeing, you know, CapEx in this industry, uh, two, three X what it was, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, and they're adding billions of cans of capacity. And it isn't, you know, for a while you've been in an undersupplied situation with net imports of incremental cans that will transition to uh, fulsome domestic supply, right? You're going to have a lot of cans around. Uh, and there's a variety of risks that, that we outlined in our earlier short deck, but we'll focus more on capacity this round uh, as a driver of the short. But yeah, that's uh, it's going back on, getting ready for uh, quad one. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.